Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome back. We're gonna do some It's the Key challenges here in Isaac, and it's, uh, I mean, it hasn't been a nightmare so far. We haven't won our first two attempts, but it's a hard challenge. YX 8K 8VSV. I'm ready. Again, you gotta, like, program your brain. Mm, the AE neurons start at zero. Well, actually, they start at a little potassium ion channel on a, an axon membrane. That's right, I took 12th grade biology. Uh, we don't not want Lazarus Rags. And we do want to keep, we want no other consumables. Remember, brain, no other consumables. Just be cool. Forget that penny, you don't want it. I can already tell. My brain is like, I'm gonna pick up a, a, a coin at some point. Even though I said no other consumables, I like immediately, as soon as that penny dropped, was like, sick, a penny. You know, it's a useful habit. It's just a, it's a, whoop. Most of the time, it leads you to not leaving consumables behind. And I know you could cherry pick this very easily. You could say NL, you leave consumables behind all the time. Yeah, but like usually it's in situations where the win is all but in the bag and I'm lazy and I'm like, uh, what is one bomb gonna do for us on the 20th floor? And the answer is not much. And we're skipping all that for now. Even though we could open them, I don't want to tempt fate and get more consumables, you know? I really, my ideal run is just like, you know, get brimstone right off the bat. And then we can just focus on not ever picking anything but keys up. We could even ignore keys, really, if that was proving to be annoying. Now, I would like to have bombs, because, like, one bomb makes the haunt fight a lot easier. Just like Harvey's makes your hamburger a beautiful thing. It's a Canadian reference. You might not get it unless you live here. Even still, you might not get it. Struck by the realization, I watched a lot of TV growing up, and I know that seems antiquated in an internet age, but, uh, you know, until I was like 14, we still had internet that was like pay by the hour. So, did sp it was also the heyday of Everybody Loves Raymond, aka television's golden age. Why hasn't history come for Raymond yet? And I mean that in a good way, like, Everybody Loves Raymond was beloved during its run. And I know it's like everybody pokes fun at it now. It was beloved, beloved during its run. And then people hated it. It's the exact same trajectory as Friends, except Friends has undergone a redemption in previous years. People are now like, you know, when I grew up, it was like if you were an, if you were an artist, you watched Seinfeld. And if you were just like, a, just another brick in the wall, you watched Friends, right? Now it's like, people are like, Friends is pretty good, it's not amazing, but it's okay. Where's Everybody Loves Raymond's Redemption? Obviously, you actually, if you were an artist, you watched Frasier. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows. You know what's, I, I had a realization the other day, and I, I want to point out that this realization seems so obvious that I would be very surprised if I was the first person to come up with it, but I am not at present aware of anybody else who has espoused this belief. But if somebody else has said it, uh, please feel free to give them the credit instead. You know, The Simpsons is like, every character is kind of uh, simple-minded, except for Lisa. Every main character, at least, is simple-minded, except for Lisa. You know, Lisa's kind of like the, the person that illustrates the absurdity of The Simpsons. And I'm not saying that, you know, Marge, Bart, Homer, you know, etc., etc. I'm not saying they don't have good hearts, but, uh... Ooh, careful there. I mean, we could probably use Laos, but... You know, Lisa's the genius, and, and she has ambition, and everybody else in the town is like, we're just happy where we are, which is fine. Frasier is the exact same show, except... Frazier's dad is Homer, and everybody else that's uh, on the show is Lisa Simpson. Well, I guess that's not totally true. Daphne's kind of also not Lisa Simpson. But Frazier and Niles are absolutely Lisa Simpson. Many of you are going like, that's why I hate Frazier. And I'm like, dude, I don't know. When I watch The Simpsons, and I know Ted Cruz said this recently, I'm not trying to be political in these videos, but I was like, Ted Cruz, have you ever watched The Simpsons? He's like the 
Democratic Party is the party of Lisa's, and the Republican Party is the party of everybody else in Springfield. And I was like, dude, I think you're getting the wrong message from The Simpsons, my, my dude. I know I'm very erudite. I said my dude about a hundred times in that sentence. But I was like, Lisa's, she's a great character. You shouldn't be trying to distance yourself from the Lisa Simpsons of the world. I'm not saying that you should be, you know, vilifying the Homers and Barts of the world either. All I'm saying is, uh, you know, Lisa's admirable. She loves the people around her, but she wants better for herself and better for her town as well. Like, Lisa is, Yo, but she's annoying. She became a vegetarian in that one episode. Yeah, she's also, like, 11 years old. You gotta cut her a little bit of slack. That's why you cut Bart some slack as well, because he's like a fourth grade boy, you know? Oh, Bart's a terrible person. No, he's a child. So all the Simpsons have a place in my political viewpoint. That's all I'm saying. But if you find yourself vilifying Lisa Simpson, the most innocent of all of the Simpsons, you gotta take a step back and go, whoa, hold up. Am I the bad guy? Because Lisa, you know, she's gonna save that town one day. Probably season 400. She's gonna come in and save that town. Now admit, you know, is Fraser Crane a little bit of a snob? Absolutely. But I think he means well. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, he talks like I wish I could talk. <laughs> anyway. The irony, of course, being Fraser Crane, who's played by Kelsey Grammer, who voiced Sideshow Bob, who tried to kill Bart Simpson. Wow, it all comes around full circle, doesn't it? I don't know why. My Pee Wee Herman voice is really good. I got, like, I got so little sleep last night. I'm, It's jet lag, dude. I got home and I was like, I'm not jet lagged. Then I napped and was like, sure is nice not having jet lag. And then last night I was wide awake at five in the morning, trying to fall asleep and going like, oh, that's that's that telltale, that's the telltale lag, isn't it? But it's all right. That's 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 how she goes, man. You know what? I don't even want you to exist. Why not take Dark Bomb? It's free. Well. Because I don't want it to pick up red hearts, give me spirit hearts, and then my brain goes, Hey, spirit hearts, and it picks them up, even though we can't use them. It's advisable for us to... And I think... Oh, you know, I would really like you to... Yes, thank you. If it was small rock, we would have been thrilled. It was not small rock, so we're not going to pick anything up, but that's... Careful, Ned, careful. I know we can pick up the key, I'm just trying to... I'm, I'm really trying to be, like, over-vigilant. Like, I'm trying to keep my brain 100% completely in tune with the It's the Key Challenge. So, even sometimes I'm not picking up keys, because I'm like, you know what, we have enough. Don't tempt fate, don't get close to any other consumables. Who is your favorite character from The Simpsons? Like, I don't know. The thing is, there's, like... You know, five main Simpsons, but let's be real, nobody's picking Maggie. If Maggie's your favorite Simpson, you have problems. Not because she's like a bad character, but because she's no character. Yeah, okay, she killed Mr. Burns, whatever. Oh god, I'm in a very dangerous situation here. Hey. Hey, have you considered screwing off? Just be careful, thank you. Um, she goes... That's that's Maggie's characterization, okay? Is your favorite character Homer? I can understand it. I think that Homer does things that if they were intentional would make him a bad person, but because they're not intentional and you know, he's he's shown on many experiences situations having a good heart. He's an okay character, you know, and he's funny. He goes doe and he does uh he's the luddite of the crew. Marge, you gotta give Marge some respect, right? You, you, you have to, when you watch The Simpsons, you gotta be like, you know, I respect Marge, but I also do pity her in a way. She's trapped herself in a life. Like, you ever watch that episode um, of The Simpsons where Marge, uh, Homer gets Marge a bowling ball for her, no, we can't take that. Homer gets Marge a bowling ball for her birthday, so she's mad because she doesn't bowl, so she takes up bowling to kind of like stick it to her husband, and then she starts flirting with the bowling instructor who is like this suave French guy who's like, Marjorie, I want to take you away from here and teach you to get strikes in heaven. That sounds like he's gonna kill her, but no. 
You watch that episode as a kid, you're like, this French guy's a jerk. And he still kind of is. You watch it as an adult, and you're like, maybe she should be, maybe she'd be better off with the French guy. I mean, he doesn't seem like that cool of a guy just because he's a bowling instructor, but at the same time, you know, he seems like he has he has respect for Marge, and he, and he treats her like the princess and the queen that she is. Dude, Empty Vessel is so good here. Because we are never not going to have this invincibility. The shot speed is irrelevant. We're really just riding this until we get to other uh, deals with the devil. Nope. Not even close. But then, you know, the thing, the thing that makes Marge very sympathetic is the fact that she loves her family above all else. She respects that... Uh, or she understands, you know, Homer not the most intelligent character in the world, but she, you know, she loves him, she loves her kids, and that's what makes her, uh, that's what makes her a good character. What's funny about The Simpsons is that I think that the characters, and I'm not saying, like, we should reward the characters based on how they would fare in the real world, but I think, like, the characters that are the most, that you'd most actually want to know in real life are the characters that people think are kind of, like, annoying on the show. Like, Lisa... Oh, she's preachy. Yeah, she has ideals. Unlike, you know, Bart's like, you know, just chaos incarnate, you know? You wouldn't want to, you would want to be Milhouse to, you know, your best friend Bart Simpson? I don't think so. He's going to pull down your underwear and show everyone your weenus in front of the, the whole school, you know? Lisa at least stands up for something. Same with Ned Flanders. Everyone's like, you know, you look at the Simpsons and you're like, yeah, Homer really got one over on Flanders. But you're like, Flanders is a, he's like the ideal neighbor. Doesn't make too much noise, you know, he's very generous with his time and his tools. He's just an all-around good guy. It's the terrible people in The Simpsons that somehow become sympathetic, you know, when you watch it yourself. Which is very strange to me. Dude, uh, so I'm having, like, a really good time on this run and everything, but, like, I don't know if it's gonna work out. Uh, could you please give me a fire rate increase? Because I'm starting to realize, I don't know if my DPS is gonna hold here. I don't know if we're gonna, if we're gonna get there with our current setup. And I love Empty Vessel, don't get me wrong. I'm, uh, not against Blood Clot. That's cool. But, we need a little bit more. Also love, uh, Ooh. We probably, again, could open it and be fine, but why risk it, right? Um, I love Cat of Nine Tails. Oh, that was bad. I love Cat of Nine Tails, but I'm really going to need you to just give me something to kind of pop it into the next gear, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, and again, we, we should pick up that key, probably. Anyway, that, th that's my dissertation on The Simpsons. Great show. It is... I, I know people say this about every show. They always say about about Animaniacs. Well, fingerprints? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, the only true scholars will get that reference. But there is a... I was watching The Simpsons because, uh, you know, occasionally when I'm doing my homework, it's on TV because uh, I live in an English-speaking country and as a result, The Simpsons is mandated to be on just about every channel. It's like that South Park and Robot Chicken. Um... And there's an episode in which, like, Marge, you know, she's happy with her station in life, but then she decides, you know what, let's improve ourselves a little bit. Let's set a better example for our kids. So she says, Homer, I want you to stop swearing so much. And he sort of doesn't get it. He's going, you know, well, like, is it okay if I stub my toe if I swear? And she goes, no. And he goes, well, is it okay if I, uh, you know, I'm talking to the phone bill people on the phone and I swear? And she goes, well, maybe. And then he goes, well, what about during snuggle time? And she goes, no, that's okay. And I was like, that's such a good, like... Only adults will get it sort of moment, because when you dirty talk, sometimes you gotta drop a little curse, of course. Marge gets it. She makes love just like a woman. It's a Bob Dylan. Anyway. Please, God, let me out of here. This would be a very advantageous time for us to receive a deal with the devil of some value. Because it's going okay, but our present, uh, the, the parameters of the run, particularly DPS, are not conducive to a, an overall successful run right now. Long term, at least. You know, we don't have the right tier effect. 
shrink shot is fine. Uh, it's not it's not bad at what it does, but we need something really like holy light, sticky shot, explosivo, something like that to to guarantee us some kind of scaling damage into the long term. Oh, thank you, empty vessel. I love my empty vessel. I'll never let it go. Y'all gonna make me come in vulnerable up in here, up in here. This is terrible, by the way. This is just a bad time. Please wander into the fire somehow. This is a textbook fight so far. Good stuff. Hold strong. Great job! And you do get an item of some value there. It's not what we're looking for, but that's okay. I don't even think we're going to take Mom's Coin Purse again. It, it literally cannot cause us problems, but I, I don't even want to risk it. Just on the off chance that somehow, like, it drops a penny when we use a pill. Like, I know that's not even how it works, but you get... I, I think it pays to be paranoid in this situation. It's hip to be a square, you know? We made a lot out of a little on this run so far. It would be different if it wasn't It's the Key. We would be like, uh, you know, oh, it's fine, we'll just survive. But not being able to have any bombs to use is, uh, is a, a genuine problem. First off, we can't open any... Uh, well, automatically on an It's the Key challenge, unless you get the quarter, you're kind of like cutting yourself up, off completely from the shop, right? So... Or the dollar, but like, you don't have any money, so you're pretty unlikely to play a slot machine, I suppose. So we've already cut off like one avenue for success. Really, it's deals with the devil that are, are gonna be the principal driver. San Francisco. Come on, come on. How many of you w watching this were born after the Gen 1 iPod came out. I'm being real, okay? I'm going through one of those moments where I'm like, I, I woke up one day and I was like, oh my god. Like, I'm almost as close to 40 as I am to 20. And I still don't think that's old. Like, as, especially in like, as a, as a, speaking as a millennial, uh, to be, uh, to be 30, doesn't seem old anymore, you know, we're expecting the lifespan, maybe it was never old, but expecting the lifespan to be really high by the time I get up there and I treat myself well, thanks to a lifetime of sitting down. Um, so I'm expecting to be around for a long time. But I was like, oh my god, I'm actually like genuinely closer to, not quite yet, you know, I got like a year before it really hits, but I'm closer to 40 almost than I am to 20. And I'm realizing, like, oh my god. If you turn 14 this year, you were born the year the original iPad came out. And that's crazy to me. Because I remember being... Well, I, what really did it for me is I was thinking about my parents. And I was like... My parents had me when they were relatively young. But not, you know, like, alarmingly young. But I, I was thinking, I was like, man, my parents were like... I think we should just stand right here, right now. That is the only place I want to be. Don't you dare. Oh, invincibility. We gotta take advantage of it. At least get in there so they can put themselves on the chopping block. You're really making it hard for me to build a moment here, by the way, game. Um, I think my mom was like 23 when she had me. But I went to high school, and you're gonna be like, oh, only one student, that's cute. But I went to high school with a girl who had a baby when she was 16. Which would have been the year 2004 or 2005. Which means that that child that was a baby then is now in high school and I was kind of struck and first off I was like oh my god I can't imagine and by the way like this is not meant as a value judgment because some of you watching this are probably in the same situation you know I think it affords you some kind of unique considerations the fact that when you're you know when your child is 40 you're gonna be 60 that's really cool you guys are like peers my parents are kind of in that situation. Like I said, my mom was 23, my dad was 24 when they had me, and now, you know, I'm almost 30, and they're just in their early 50s. So it's kind of like when we when we hang out, it is kind of like two adults hanging out. 
I was gonna say equals, but we're not really equals considering, like, you know, until, like, six years ago, they basically paid for everything in my entire life. <laughs> it's more like an artist and their patron, if you will. Um, but anyway, yeah, and I'm the artist, of course, uh, as mentioned many times. But it's neat, yeah, but they, really I was like, oh my god, her son is in high school. It doesn't feel that long ago that I was in high school, and now, pretty soon, and this is not to be crass, but like, planned conceptions are going to be in high school. Strange thought. You know, people, I think the first moment that strikes people where they go like, oh, I'm getting old, is when their friends start getting married and, and like having children. You think that that's when you you kind of are struck with the realization and it never stops, but or sorry, it, it stops after that point. Trust me, it doesn't. When you're like, oh my god, their kids are starting school. That's crazy. And then when you're like, oh my god, their kids are starting a high school. What is happening? And I don't feel any rush to get involved in that myself. Like, genuinely, don't feel any rush. However, I am like, it, it's it's really stunning. Cause I was like, I knew you in high school. You couldn't even manage your own life. And now you're managing the life of another person that's in high school? That's very strange. But you know, those people have probably changed a lot. It's hard, it's strange to think about, but like, when you s never see someone again, like there's you know, hundreds of people I've, I haven't seen. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, I'm Ryan. There's tons of people I haven't seen since uh, high school. And in my head, they're permanently stuck as, like, who they were in high school. I think people find themselves trapped by that a lot. You're like, this person was a dick in high school. So you think back on them, like, ten years later, and you're like, I hate that person. They could have gone through a redemption arc, you know? They, you don't even know. They could be working for UNICEF or something now. They're, You know, you go talk to them, and you're like, hey, you were a real dick to me in high school. And they're like, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I was uh, 16. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I just think it's funny. It's not to say that the, the experience is invalidated. I just think it's funny that, like, you know, when you... A person in your head is always going to be crystallized, and I don't think there's any other way to do it, but they're always going to be, like, crystallized as, you know, what they were the last time that you saw them. And you're going to not necessarily hold a grudge, but whenever you think about that person, you're going to be like, I hope they're in... I hope they're living a life of pain and sorrow now. But you're like, man, they might be, like... They might be good people. Doesn't invalidate what they may or may not have done 10, you know, even two years ago. But, you know, things... People change. People change. It's like the foundation of our, of our legal system. Dude, can you just thank you? Really appreciate that. Uh, so, in case it's not abundantly clear, I, I think we're kind of... Uh, <laughs> Just kill me. You might as well just kill me. I I feel like an idiot. Oh! Oh! I feel. I mean, I paused because I all tabbed, but I'm also upset. What is going on here? I'm looking at like this uh, Discord group that we got going on here for the NLSS. I think. I think we should play Mount Your Friends 3D for sure. Anything else? We could worms it up in the middle. Okay. So I'm an idiot, and I wasn't distracted by the Skype call when I failed the It's the Key Challenge. I was just distracted by my own moronic nature. Um, but in hindsight, you know what? We should just make the run work. So we failed the It's the Key Challenge. We've respawned as Lazarus. If we get hit once, we'll die. But you know what? Let's try to make the run happen. I got so mind flooded. Actually, my brain decided to take like a minute and a half off when I picked up the penny. After doing that whole run, you're just like, oh, you know what would be funny right now is if we just completely ruined it. But hey, look at this. Now die against greed. Oh, we still have Holy Mantle. That's right. By the way, I'm sorry. Like I keep sniffling. My voice probably doesn't sound that great. I'm, uh, not, not ill, just, uh, again, got, like, next to no sleep last night. And by next to no, I mean, like, five hours. By the way, if you find yourself being, like, five hours, oh, that's, like, the amount of sleep that I get on an average night. For God's sakes, go to bed earlier. 
I'm saying this not as a person who is mad that you're like sleep shaming me. I say this as a person who's like, you know, I, I care about your mental, physical well-being. I think it's like the same thing as like the breakfast anecdote I always say, which is people go, I don't eat breakfast and I feel fine. And I'm like, well, when was the last time you ate breakfast and did an A-B test of how you feel? I, if you want to say I don't eat breakfast because I'm too lazy in the morning, I, dude, I can relate to laziness 100%. By all means, be lazy, my dude. But if you're like, I feel better not eating in the morning, I think you should just try it out for like a month. I know a month seems like a long time, but it's not. And then see how you feel after eating breakfast for a month. And if you still, if you truly believe, oh yeah. If you truly believe that you feel better not eating breakfast, then go for it. But if you haven't tried it in a while, I can't stress it enough. I, you know, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I don't necessarily buy that. This is good. I think, you know, whatever meal's coming next is the most important meal of the day. But it, getting a good breakfast, I think it starts your day off right. You know what I like about eating breakfast? And I, uh, this is maybe a unique concern for people that do what I do, uh, i.e. they work from home. Uh, but you might work from home as well. And I think this is a genuine productivity tip. And this is not me packaging like any kind of self-help. Because every self-help book and program in existence will tell you the, some variation of this thing. The difference is that I'm not going to pretend I invented it. Or the, an ancient bodhisattva in the Tibetan mountains passed down one simple tip. You know, I'm not trying to sell you anything except watching another thousand of my videos so I can buy a bag of milk tomorrow, right? The thing is, I think... The faster, if you want to be productive, the faster you do something in a day, to, the first thing, well, this is like why you should have an editor. Um, the earlier you do something productive, the better your day is going to be overall in terms of productivity. Now, I'm not saying eating is necessarily productive, but I think if you make yourself a little breakfast as soon as you get up, you get up, even if it's just throwing toast in the toaster and then putting some butter and jam on it or something like that. You've already accomplished one task for the day, no matter how small. And getting tasks done is, like, addictive. You set up, like, oh, you're done. You set up, like, a chain of getting uh, tasks done. And it leads you to be more and more productive. How many times do you ever, you know, you have one thing to do over the course of a Sunday or something like that? You know, like, I gotta mow the lawn. Well, you wake up, ah, I'm not going to mow the lawn yet, I'll just see what's on TV, ah, you know, I got to check my email, oh, cool, you know, my friends are playing Overwatch, I'll just get on and play a couple games of Overwatch, then, oh, before you know it, 3 or 4 p.m., and you're like, oh, now I've, I've still got to mow the lawn, but now, like, dinner's coming up soon, and I got to, you know, you get the idea. All I'm trying to say is, I think the, the, earlier within the course of a single day, that you go like, hey, I've got this task to do, and I'm going to do it the better your day is going to be. It sets a tone overall. That's just my personal belief on that, at least. And I think every, you know, supposed guru has some kind of variation on that theme. That's why like, I, I wake up, I have tasks, you know? Wow, it sounds like you live a very spontaneous life. I don't. <laughs> but I don't... I don't know. I, I think I live a good life. I, I, I enjoy my life. I don't, I don't know what spontaneity has to do with it. Like, I... Maybe as a as a youngster, you look at spontaneousness, which is literally just spontaneity, and you go, "Oh, that's admirable." But now, as an adult, I look at that and I go, "It's unstable." You know, I, I think it's cool when I talk to someone and they're like, "Yeah, you know, I've got like a five year plan. Like, I've been really plugging away. I should be able to get a promotion in a couple of years." And uh, you know, I'm really making myself invaluable at the company. I'm like, "You are a god. Great job and good work." You know, that's a very sensible thing. It's very mature to be like, you know what? To accomplish a long-term goal is going to take me a lot of time, and I'm going to take the steps necessary to get there because it delays my gratification but leads to more gratification and stability in the end. It's a very, uh, at least I look at it as a juvenile attitude when people are like, yeah, I could do this thing that's good for my life, but instead I just decided I'm going to like frig off to El Salvador for a month. If you're planning to, tr I mean, this, this now it's a very valued judgment. And it's not even like truly what I believe. If you're like, I'm going to go on vacation for a month, that's cool. But if you're like, nah, I went to the airport to drop off my girlfriend and then I just decided, let's go to Prague. I'm like, are you okay? Do you need to talk to somebody? That's not something that's within the, that's like a Hollywood idea of, of what being an adult is like. It's like, I can do anything so I'm going to, you know, 
go reenact the events of Euro Trip when what being an adult is actually about to me is putting, you know, people's interests that you care about ahead of your own in order to, you know, facilitate a, a stable life. And if you think that sounds sad, we're not in the same ballpark, dude. I think that's, you know, that's part of what being an adult is all about is respecting other people's, uh, you know, values as much or sometimes even more than your own. That's my personal belief on it anyway. But if you, you know, I mean, you're also talking to the guy. That's why I don't uh, take much gruff about this. People are like, NL, you live a boring life. I'm like, I lived in Asia by myself for a year in a country I didn't speak a language, know anybody. I was like 20 years old. Don't tell me. I, I got no problems with the spontaneity in my life. Painkillers only put me in the twilight. Pretty what and Benjamin is the highlights. I tell my mama I love her, but this is what I like, Lord knows. I'm like, I'm telling you to lead a boring life, and then in the uh, the other side of things, I kind of like, don't even, had, well, at least as a youngster, didn't even follow my own advice. And you can tell I'm getting older, because I just said the word youngster like four times unironically. So, we, we should still have Holy Mantle, right? I know I'm waiting for like empty vessel invincibility, but we should have Holy Mantle. Yeah, we do. Okay, fantastic. So that's very important because we'll use Holy Mantle to do things like this right here. Buy us some time. We should definitely use empty vessel whenever it's available as well. I don't know what it is about like, and I, I'm pretty sure the answer is just something to do with like, you know, your immune system is compromised when you don't get that much sleep, but like, my body produces too much of two bodily fluids when I haven't slept enough. One of them is mucus, and I'll, you know, the other one is not really a bodily fluid, it's more of a bodily solid, and you can probably figure it out for yourself. That's right, it's bone. My body produces too much bone. Not true. Dude, this is a, a longish run here. Let's see what's going on in the NLSS group here. Celeste, right, sure. We could try the first few Choptars, I suppose. I don't know. Celeste race seems a little wonky, but, you know, Nick, you watch this episode? I want you to know, you know, it, it's, I, I really treat the NLSS docket planning as if it's like the United Nations, you know? If I want to sneak something onto the docket, I have to allow some concessions at some times. So, you know, if I'm saying, hey, Mount Your Friends 3D would be a lot of fun, but you don't really want to play it, then I'm open to being like, sure, this thing that I don't necessarily find myself 100% into, let's give it a shot. You know, it's part of conducive working together. So, yeah, I'm not, I mean, we're, this video is probably going to come out like a couple days after this NLSS even airs. How did the Celeste race go? Mostly, I'm just hoping it's banter rich. Celeste's a great game. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, of course. Made by, you know, Vancouver local Matt Thorson. Tower Fallen Jumper, man. Wait, what, what was our other card? I haven't even... I've been paying attention to, like, nothing over the course of this run. It's the stars. All right. It does... I, I, I will say... It's not much of a race when you've beaten the game and all the B-sides. And me and Cobalt have only beaten the A-sides of, like, the first three chapters. But, all, you know, again... You know, it's the United Nations. You got to allow some, uh, if you want to sneak a binding resolution in, you've got to accept that, you know, you might have to ship some of your steel to a, a country that you're competitive with in order to get them to, you know, lift an embargo on your tariffs. I don't know anything about international politics. Anyway. It's the way she goes, man. Again, it's being an adult, you got to put someone else's interests uh, in line or perhaps even in some situations ahead of your own. You guys ever, like, uh, so, many people, by the way, are gonna, I think, disagree with me when I say put other people's interests ahead of your own. And I'm not gonna use the book yet, because I might get a deal with the devil right here, and then I'll use the book after that in order to get a life with two hearts instead of a life with one. But anyway, one second here. Uh, I mean, Death's List can be pretty fun. I think we might as well give it a try. People, I, I think, you know what I think turns people into selfish people. I think some people are, are born selfish or raised selfish, absolutely. But then I, I also think that, oh right, we're not gonna have Empty Vessel, that's okay. I think that some people 
start their lives being selfless. And then they see selfish people get ahead and they go, you know what? I'm gonna be selfish myself and as a result, I'll get ahead. Uh, thanks to that. There's a little range upgrade right off the bat. I'm gonna give you one simple tip that I learned from a bodhisattva on top of a Tibetan mountain. If someone ever does something mildly selfish by cutting in front of you in line and you go, well, they're gonna finish their what they're doing like 10 minutes faster than me as a result of that, and I'm gonna lose. No, you don't. Because all here's what you do. In your head, you just go, wow, I might have to wait here for an extra five minutes, but at least I'm not a dick like that guy. And then you just imagine that he lives his whole life being a jerk to everybody around him and nobody likes him because he's being selfish. And as a result, you find yourself realizing, hey, I'm the true winner in this situation. He got through the line faster, but, you know, he has to live his whole life being kind of a jerk. Meanwhile, I'm over here, you know, getting my best revenge by living well, being at least to some extent periodically liked by the people around me for having an affable nature and, you know, being considerate of their concerns. That's how I justify it. Or try to, at least. Alright, let's start rebuilding this run, because we're it's getting a little spotty. I can't believe, like, our damage never really got much better here. I really should be, well, it's debatable. I was going to say I really should be using uh, Empty Vessel, uh, not Empty Vessel, sorry, uh, Midas Touch, that's it. I should be using Midas Touch to do uh, a little bit more juice here, but it's not always going to be appropriate, I suppose. A situation like this, yeah, there we go. It's getting appropriate. He must have been hit with another status effect. He did not get frozen. Well, in the end, this was not uh, an it's the key run that ended up coming to fruition. Doesn't make it bad, though. Sort of makes it just, it's real. Come on. That's what I'm looking for. That's like the, the perfect situation. Walk in there, crush an enemy who's a real jerk. Might as well take that. Alright, I think we'll probably win if we make it through this section right here. Run, admittedly, a little stinky. Not the least stinky run I've ever experienced. Excuse me, sir. I don't believe I took damage there. I know that the hitboxes beg to differ, but uh, I'm I'm issuing a formal complaint to the Security Council. If you do not mind. Yeah, this is like... Isaac is always like a good Rorschach. That doesn't seem like that's how that is pronounced. <laughs> Isaac's a good Rorschach for like... Uh, how your DPS is. If he survives like one barrage during this phase right here, your damage is not as good as you would like it to be. Sorry to say. And our damage is fine. It's our tier effects and our DPS that leave a lot to be desired. Luckily, like, you know, we got range and shot speed, so Lump of Coal can get the job done, but definitely do not die right here. I think that was closer than it had any right to be. Okay, what do we got going on in the NLSS here? Yeah, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. NLSS Cobalt Day, Celeste Race, Worms Revolution, Mount Your Friends 3D, hopping off iPad and heading Pistai upstairs. I have no idea what Pistai means. But that, I, I think it, it, he was probably just typing upstairs twice. Okay, the soul, the Ankh will take... Harlequin Baby will take. We'll take it all. Again, I love Polyphemus, don't get me wrong. Rate of Fire is just absolutely horrible, but Rotten Baby's Rate of Fire is not affected, so... I'm a happy man. I'm hoping, or was hoping, I should say, to pick up, like, some kind of mapping. Because I'm a little bit behind schedule, <laughs> but... Ah, that's okay. We're going to finish this run just in time, I think. Plus, I had that, you know, any run in which you can talk a little bit about 
the twin scions of Frasier and the Simpsons is like a perfect situation, you know? Have you been listening to Weezer lately, NL? No, I don't even know. Like, you know, my... The breadth of my knowledge is so strange. I know that there is a Weezer song called Perfect Situation. I like Weezer. I've never heard the song in my life, and yet I know that the music video stars Alicia Cuthbert. Again, I, you're going to say, how do you have that... Like, you must be making part of that up. No, it's... I do like Weezer. But I don't think I've ever heard a full album of theirs after... Pinkerton. Which I know is very DAE, uh, Pitchfork Media, but, you know... I come by it honestly. Hey, let me out of here. Our luck stat is zero. Tears and luck, that's what we were missing here. Damage is fine. I mean, 26 damage is just... You, you literally cannot complain about that. Anytime you got damage in, like, the double digits, you got to look at that as a, an outrageous blessing. But it would be better if we could get out of double-digit rate of fire, perhaps, in order to reach our true uh, potential here. All right, I think we should open every single room like that. Being able to freeze these enemies, especially with actually 58 cents, is doing quite a number on them. I guess the flies got to you before I could. Like, look at that. Just a beautiful situation. Kind of waiting for uh, Death's List to do a little bit more work for me, but I digress. I love that, like, the, the true lineage of this run, or legacy, I should say, of this run, is the fact that we just have no bombs. <laughs> Ever. Well, okay. This is doable. Beautiful. Hey! A shot speed increase. Just what we asked for, and also needed at this present time. Doesn't really matter if you hit me, because, uh, well, we shouldn't have done that, but I was kind of hoping to get a little... Midas touch action going there. Either way, you're dead, we're gonna win. I'm right, you're wrong, let's go. Please, please, one more hit. No delirium, we're out. Hey, thanks for watching. No, it's the key, but at least we salvaged it into a win. For now, thanks for watching, if you liked it, click the like button, also a great deal, of course, subscribe if you wanna see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, later.